Okay. So, um, so Ripper, do you want to take this part? Okay. Do I need to read the stuff that was on the PDF at the beginning? Um, I think so. If that's available to you, that would be great. Yeah. Here it is. Come on. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, so this is the uh, Board of Library Trustees Library Director Search Committee meeting, Friday, May 8, 2020. All participants are notified that this meeting is being recorded. For this meeting, the town is using a product called GoToWebinar. Attendees using the GoToWebinar app online or on a mobile device should be able to see the meeting presentation and ask questions when directed. Your audio has been muted. Attendees participating by phone are muted and are in listen-only mode. You don't, you don't have to, go ahead. Okay, so um, please use patience when submitting a question. Questions will be responded to at the discretion of the board chair. Questions submitted and hands raised will be communicated to the chair. Please keep in mind that all questions submitted will become part of the meeting's record. I think that's it. Yep, go ahead. Um, we just need Brian to move this. Okay, so, um, so I will do some quick introduction. Um, I apologize if I have said your name wrong, so please correct me. Is it um, Natane? My name is Natani Hellas. Natani, thank you. I'm sorry about that. No um, problem. It's a tricky one. <laughs> I was trying to do phonetics and it didn't work so well. Uh, so welcome. Um, my name is Mackenzie Bailey. I'm the chair of the Library Trustees. Um, and we're just going to go around and introduce ourselves and then I'm going to make it so that you can be on camera. <clears throat> okay, so let's see if that made a difference. So if you could, um, if you don't have your webcam on, if you could turn it on. I don't think we can see you yet. We we might we might be able to hear you, but we can't see you. Do you have a webcam? Um, I do have a camera. It is saying all webcam spaces are currently being used. Uh, okay. Right. So, so here's what we're gonna do. We, we will do an introduction, and then um, panelists who would like to go off. Jean, do you want to do? Oh, okay. So Becky's going to go off, and that way that'll open up a spot for you to come on. Okay. Okay, all right, so Becky, why don't you do your introductions and then we'll say goodbye. <laughs> okay, um, I'm Becky Hubbard. I am an Irving resident, um, an avid library user, and I'm also president of the Friends of the Library. Okay, thank you, Becky. You're welcome. So now Becky's gonna turn off her webcam and you should now have a slot to, op to okay. turn your on. There you are, we see you. Yeah. Great, okay. Uh, Rupert, why don't you go next? Sure, um, um, my name is Rupert Roy Clark. I am uh, a, a resident of Irving and I am a, a library trustee member. And Jane, can you, uh, can you go next? Me, okay. Hi there, I'm Jane Urban. I am not an Irving resident. I am the school librarian over at Irving Elementary School, but I am still both personally a, a big user of the Irving Library and also professionally. We get lots of books through ILL from uh, Irving Public Library for the school kids. Right. Great. And Jean, can you go next? Sure. Hi, I'm Jean Daly. I'm the library assistant. Nice to meet you, Jean. And Dan? 
I'm Dan Hammock, library trustee, Irving resident, a few other things, and uh, I have no idea why I have a psychedelic uh, camera <laughs> on my computer. So. I want it when you're done with it. <laughs> <laughs> and Charlie, if you could go. I'm Charles Lenski. Uh, I'm an Irving resident, and I'm also on the finance committee. And Charlie's joining us by just by phone, so you won't see his face. Okay, lovely. Okay, great. So um, we're you know two minutes early, but if it's okay with you, we're go. We'll just go ahead and get started. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Um, the first question. Um, this is Becky. Is why be a library director? Why Irving? And what aspect of the position do you expect to like the most? And which aspect will you like the least? Okay. Um, I also want to say that I tend to be a person that works with notes in front of me. Um, so I do have notes here. If I, if I look down, that's what I'm looking at. So um, it may be notes no as well. Um, so for me, librarianship is a career change a few years ago. Um, I had always dreamed of becoming a librarian. Um, I was able to fulfill that dream when I moved back to the area a few years ago. Um, and while I was working at Hampshire College as an administrator, I um, completed my degree um, part-time. Um, while I was working at Hampshire as basically an assistant dean and completing my degree, I, I realized by being around other managers and working for managers that I actually had some real strengths in management. Um, and so that's when I started thinking about the possibility of becoming a director in library land after I graduated. Um, and uh, I have no inclination to leave Western Mass. Um, and I have an affinity for small town life. So that put me squarely in the area of um, small and or rural library directorship. Um, so about eight months after graduation, I was working in Fitchburg as a librarian and I was offered the Leverett director job. Um, and even though it was less pay, I have to say, uh, it shaved an hour and a half on my, off of my commute and, um, and it brought me back to that dream that you know I had realized while I was in school. Um, so why Irving? Um, I love answering this because it's really exciting to, to talk about. Um, so Barbara, your current director, is a colleague, and her excitement and her enthusiasm and her pride of the new library is so contagious that, um, and I mean, what librarian wouldn't want to work in a brand spanking beautiful new building? Um, the proximity to the senior center and the school is kind of like the golden trifecta. Um, so, you know, um, Irving side just has that going for it, which is an amazing thing. Um, beyond the library and the surrounds, um, Irving as a town is, to me, future focused. I watched um, your select board meeting um, regarding the, um, the visioning project by the UMass students, and that was really exciting to watch. Um, you've just been given the MVP grant, which we, you know, we had here in Pelham, so I know what good things can come out of that. Um, you seem really invested in your people. The fact that you have a senior center and a brand new library says a lot just right there. Um, I know personally or have spoken through my work at Leverett with a number of your town leaders and I've been really impressed with um, professionalism and I, I want in on that. Um, and um, finally, I'm a little bit nostalgic about Irving. I grew up in Ashburnham. Um, so I am familiar with the Route 2 corridor and how that impacts um, the lives of people that live in that area. Um, I grew up going to Irving State Forest with my dad um, and uh, my son's birthday party was scheduled to be at the bowling center, but then COVID happened, so we had to cancel. <laughs> um, and the other one last thing is um, I currently work in a CW Mars member library in Franklin County, so it feels very familiar to me. And to answer the last part of your question, um, what I love about um, where I work now and where, you know, what it would be at in Irving is the fact that uh, as a small library director, you get to do all the things that you learn in library school, which are really enjoyable. 
but you also get to use your management skills. Um, but having said that, that's also the challenge um, because we don't get a pass like big libraries. Um, the director gets to do a little bit of everything and everything um, is a challenge. Does that answer your question? <laughs> yes, very nicely, thank you. Okay, thanks. Our next question is current events. COVID-19 is affecting library services. If we continue to operate from a closed building, what new services would you offer our patrons and what do you see staff doing? Yeah, um, so everybody's minds right now, of course. Um, and um, we all know that services look different in libraries right now. Um, what I'm finding through all of this is that my priority is connection. Um, I stepped up my um, efforts on my e-newsletter that I send out. I usually send it out only about once a month. Um, but while we are closed, I have been sending it about once a week. And I can talk about resources and um, digital things. And, and, and I, can, I can talk about that forever in my newsletter. The newsletter that got the most response by far was the one in which we didn't even talk about resources at all. We just sent pictures of us saying we miss you. And I received probably uh, 50 responses to that. People just appreciating um, reaching out and the connection. Um, and I think that's what we're all um, missing right now. Um, so that said, that's my connection. My, that's my priority. Um, that can look a lot of different ways depending on the staff that you're working with. So I feel like staff are our best resource and um, I would really, you know, work with the staff as to what are your strengths? What do you think the community needs right now? What can we, how can we scale that to our library? Um, and how can we deliver that? So that might look like a digital um, service that might look like um, just some examples of what I'm doing in Leverett. Um, you know, kids are out of school, they're focusing on social connection um, in the schools. So I did a letter writing campaign to the Lever Elementary School families. Um, I encouraged them to write back to me with, and I included self-addressed stamped envelopes in, in that, so it's a partnership with the Lever Elementary School. Um, send me drawings, photos, poems, anything you want. I will write back to you if you respond to me in some way. And then I said we would have a drawing for a box of books when we reopen. So there's a little incentive there as well. Um, we have been calling our more vulnerable patrons and our senior patrons, just checking in, saying hi. Um, to me, that is programming, that is service, that is um, connecting with your community in some way. We were there before, we'll be there after. Yeah, we look a little bit different right now. Um, I think everybody understands that for the most part. And, um, you know, I'm willing to also protect staff from the, from the people that say, well, you should be doing more, you should be doing something different. Um, we've been doing a lot of other things at Leverett, um, and I think it really depends on the community. So, you know, I would work with staff to see what would be in the best interest. Can I answer your question, Jean? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, well, I have a question now about young adults. <clears throat> sure. Our young adults barely saw the new building before it closed. <laughs> um, they're a varied group. They're gamers, serious readers, crafters. Mm -hmm. um, could you tell us a little bit about your experience with um, working with young adults? And what have you yeah. found that engages them? What services and activities would you offer them through the Irving Public Library? I guess both uh, once we get back there and even, even before from, from home. Sure. sure. So I, um, when I was at Fitchburg for about seven, eight months, um, I was a reference librarian. I think my exact title was adult librarian, but I actually... Um, spent a good portion of my duties as um, a young adult librarian. Mm -hmm. And they had an existing teen advisory board when I entered the position, um, so I continued that. I'm not sure if Leverett has uh, a teen advisory board tab 
as it's often known or you know by other names. Um, but I think this would be a really good time to start something like that. Um, my reasons for that are that um, if we did it digitally or by paper or by phone, it's actually kind of a less confrontation confrontational way for awkward or you know embarrassed or uncomfortable or unsure teens to engage. Um, feels a little safer than just showing up to a meeting. Um, mm -hmm. So I think this would be a great time to try that out. Um, obviously, I don't know the community yet, but usually um, people that are working with um, you know, tweens and teens, they can usually point you to some ones that would be good to start with um, that might you know, have a fire in them to get something like this started. Um, you know, and they're excited about a brand new building. So there's gotta be some enthusiasm there that we can capitalize on. Um, and schools are again, you know, um, promoting social connections, so it's in with their schoolwork, right? Um, so I ran the existing uh, tab at Fitchburg, um, and food was the main way that we enticed teens in. I have to say, <laughs> uh, it worked. Um, um, in the case of a virtual meeting, you know, I'd probably try something like, let's have a drawing. You know, if you show up to the meeting, I'm going to put your name in a drawing for whatever it might be, um, books uh you know a gift card something like that um i think when you give teens a, a little bit of ownership so they can come up with the the rules of facilitation for their advisory board as soon as they have a little bit of ownership in it a little bit of governance um you're you know you're halfway there to making them feel empowered um what else did i do let's see um i uh try to do something that was reliable and consistent with teens. So they knew that at three o'clock on Thursday, there was a, an advisory board meeting. They, they could count on that. Um, uh, I always had some ideas in my back pocket, but I was really saying, bring your ideas and we will make them work. If we can't make them all work, we'll do our best. But I always had a few ideas just in case to get conversations started. Um, yeah. And some of the programs that we ran were uh, painting metal bookends so that the library felt more like something that they had created. Um, that was really popular. Um, you know, board game night. Um, we had a Stranger Things theme night, which was super fun. Uh, theme nights always go over pretty well. Um, cupcake decorating. Um, and, um, you know, some went really well, some didn't. But I think as long as you're consistent and reliable, the teams. Um, they respond to that. Um, and I also kind of touched base with local, uh, the local YMCA when I was in Fitchburg, um, just to see where they thought some gaps were or how we could attract more teens. Um, and I worked with the high school librarian, um, middle school librarians. Um, and uh, yeah, we started, you know, we started getting more teens in and the, and the librarian that followed me did a great job as well. So um, it's exciting when you can start you know, getting teens into the library. Yeah, yeah, great, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, I'm up. Uh, this is Rupert again. And um, I have a question for you about leadership. Sure. Um, as a library director, you would be expected to show leadership with your staff and with your volunteers, as well as within the community. Um, so I'd like you to tell us um, to describe your leadership style uh, with people that you supervise and also your leadership style with, with peers, like, uh, for example, other uh, department heads or whatever. Okay, um, I'll start with staff and, and volunteers. At Leverett, I have one part-time staff member and I have around 20 volunteers um, that I see over the course of about two to four weeks. Um, and uh, my most important thing that I've learned, and it's something that I learned from uh, a fantastic manager that I had at one point, was um, always try to be self-aware. Um, and I think about what it's like to work with me and uh, or work for me. And um, that has really helped me frame how I um, work with, with um, the people that I supervise. Um, I try to communicate early, often. Um, sometimes I would like to say I'm an over communicator. Um, and um, I like to start off new work relationships by uh, asking what their communication style is. 
Um, you know, not everybody wants to um, be emailed about something. They'd rather you pick up the phone. So those kinds of work styles and work preferences, I think, are important. Um, my staff member said recently, about a couple weeks ago, she said to me, I miss the sound of your voice. And every, I, I, I don't overanalyze to the point where it, it drives me crazy, but I learned something from that one little statement. I learned two things. It was, okay, so I've obviously made a connection with her that the sound of my voice doesn't drive her crazy. She actually misses it. So I've done something right there. But the, on the flip side, what I also learned from that statement was, I need to communicate more with her right now. She needs more from me right now. She needs to hear more from me over the phone and not just through email. So it was good. It was, you know, you can always learn something from, from those interactions. Um, and I think those things also flow out to how you deal with your peers and your colleagues. Um, I like to think that thanking people goes a long way, um, particularly when you're working with volunteers. Um, thanking them for small things, thanking them for big things. Um, recognition goes a really long way. Um, you know, we'd always love to do more for our staff and volunteers to, to show appreciation, but I think the little things are important too. Um, you know, aside from having a volunteer appreciation um, to show that you're not a leader without the people that help you. Um, you know, it was Volunteer Appreciation Week, I think a couple weeks ago, national. Um, so I wrote, you know, about 35 thank you cards to volunteers. Um, and it's, it's exciting to get mail right now too, right? Because you don't get out much. So um, yeah, so I think, you know, thanking people, celebrating meaningful contributions and, and, and small wins, celebrating those with your, with your colleagues and your staff um, is really important. Nice, thank you. You're welcome. So I have a question about event planning. Uh -huh. We have a history of running many events for all age groups and various interests. Tell us briefly about a library event you planned that was successful and one that was not. Also, what would you do differently in the future? Yeah, so if there's one refrain that I learned really quickly once I became a director was, um, when it comes to programming, it's hit or miss. And sometimes the programs that you suspect are going to be really popular just fall flat. And some that you don't think are gonna attract much of a crowd blow the roof off. And you sometimes you just don't know why and you can't chalk it up to anything. Sometimes you can, you know, the weather is not that great or whatever, There's, there are reasons and sometimes there aren't. Um, I hear that all the time. So while it's good to keep an eye on what makes a good event sometimes you just need to give yourself a little grace and and realize that they just don't all go over um, and sometimes that's outside your control so that said um, i've had a, a few of both for sure um, and um, i have grown programming at leverett by about 30 percent we were in a good spot to begin with when i took over the job um, of the libraries in our population size um, which is around 68 in the state. We were number eight for programming. So for a library that size, it's pretty good. Um, but I, I increased that. So it's one of my favorite aspects of librarianship. I love programming. I love events. Um, it's a great way to highlight the library. I think it promotes safety. I think when you have things going on and you have a bustling library, it's a safer place to be. Um, it helps the local economy. I really believe in keeping things local where possible and hiring local people um, and you know capitalizing on that talent. Um, and so you know one that I'm particularly proud of was um, and I'll talk a little bit more about this in collaborations, but um, uh, we started a libraries in the woods um, community read last year. So I initiated that with about 10 libraries. Um, last year, one of the programs that I ran as part of that was um, a canine tracking um, program. So I reached out to the Montague PD and uh, had a wonderful officer, the officer there, Jim Ruddick, come and with his canine arty. And, um, you know, I knew it would attract some interest um, because the Facebook event had huge numbers. Um, but, yeah, we ran out of parking. Um, we filled our space. It was great. He was great. The patrons were great. 
everybody loved it. Um, I think where I went um, well with that was I thought about what the community would like. I kept it local. I really kind of uh, had a good conversation with the presenter beforehand. So we knew what the expectations were. Um, so we, you know, that kind of collaboration, uh, communication was really important. Um, and um, I advertised early and often and extensively. Um, and I also thought about the time that I would need to invest. So I think you really need to think about um, what kind of time you're going to be putting into the event and what you expect the community will get out of it. Um, one that went really badly, to, and when I say badly, no one showed up. I mean, that's right, your ultimate fail, yeah. kind of. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was um, one that I thought would attract so many people. Um, I scheduled it on a Saturday, which it was aimed at families. So maybe that's where I went wrong. Saturdays are hard, right? A lot of people are doing things. Um, but it was a brainchild of mine when I was researching Franklin County um, uh, a hospital report and found out that uh, Franklin County has a really high rate of childhood asthma. And I was surprised by that, and it's higher than the state average. And I thought there's got to be there's got to be families that are affected by this. So I um, went through my contacts and I got um, an emergency physician to come and talk about it. Luckily, she didn't live very far away, so it wasn't out of her way. She was happy to do it. She showed up. Nobody showed up, um, and I just I couldn't believe it, and I felt so badly. Um, I think what I learned from that was. She and I had <clears throat> a lot beforehand, but the information she gave me probably should have been translated into plainer language for the flyer and the advertising. It might a little might have been a little bit scary. Um, and uh, maybe you know, look at the time and who I'm who I'm kind of trying to get there um, and what what are the best times for those that group of people. There's always something to learn, but then again, it just happens sometimes. Um, can you tell us a little something about your experiences developing and advocating for budgets with trustees or finance committees, town meetings, uh, things like that? Um, and what's your experience managing and reporting on a budget over the course of a year? Sure. When I first started at Leverett, uh, I went to the town administrator, the treasurer, and the accountant and said, tell me about budgets. Tell me about budgeting and leverage, tell me about um, warrants and leverage, tell me what I need to do so that, um, you know, I get this right. Um, so I think early on speaking to, um, you know, town administration um, about that is really important. Um, what I'm also finding being uh, a director is that there's a lot of misunderstanding about how a library budget works how we're mandated to have, um, you know, certain things in our budget um, by the state, mandated by the state. Um, so I, I find there's a lot of confusion about it. So I think um, one way to counteract that is to um, have, you know, like an infographic, which I had at um, the town meeting in Leverett last year, um, just to explain things visually, um, kind of break down some of those acronyms that are um, meaningful to, to librarians, but not to anybody else. Um, and try and, you know, try and educate the community about what goes into a library budget. Um, so I've, I've tried to do that. Um, at my monthly trustees meetings, I report on our budget. Sometimes I get granular, um, but I don't do that at every meeting. By granular, I mean, this is what I'm spending percentage-wise on collection, you know, different uh, for my collection management. Um, I um, also think it's important to present different scenarios. So I usually come up with a few different scenarios as, as to what our budget would look like if this happened or this happened or this happened. Um, and um, beyond, you know, the, the operational budget, um, Grants are important to any library, I think. Um, they typically are there to help us achieve our mission and they round out our budget. 
Um, so and my two years in Leverett, I um, thankfully um, managed to um, get a number of grants. Um, I was awarded a Go Local grant from LSTA to collaborate with um, the Leverett Historical Commission, um, several professional development grants, Leverett Cultural Council, um, and also part of uh, a FERCOG regional uh, library digital resources project right now. Um, and uh, yesterday, I was invited to um, sit on the uh, Massachusetts Library Systems Finance Committee. Um, so that is an essential committee um, that I would be working on for two and a half years. So that would certainly inform, um, you know, my budgeting as well. Hope that answered that. Very well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Oh, that's me. Technology. What experience do you have maintaining computers, laptops, iPads, etc., and selecting and installing software? What experience do you have working with and maintaining wireless networks, antivirus and anti-malware software, and privacy controls? Okay. So this one, um, I've been responsible for installing computer security software suites on the staff computers um, at Leverett. Um, I am comfortable, very comfortable using and trying new software. I've been using Canva, which is a free design software tool for years, way before it was cool to do it. Um, but I have to say that I work, I feel like IT is its own field, it's, it's its own professional um, field. And um, I work closely with two IT professionals in my current job, one that works for Leverett, and then one that actually um, is uh, more of a consultant. He does work for the um, Amherst Jones Library System, but he also works for other libraries. Um, and um, we work together, but they, you know, they do most of the installation. Um, when I purchased new computers last year, I looked to that, you know, I looked to him, um, the one for an Amherst to advise me on that, to work with me on, on what I should be looking for. Um, so um, I'm comfortable getting in there and, and, and trying my best and librarians are great at um, sharing information. So, um, you know, we, we're always bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, but really, I've been fortunate to work with IT professionals to help me with that kind of work. Um, and uh, so if outsourcing is not quite what is done in um, Irving, that's fine. That, that's not a scary prospect to me. But, you know, I want you to know that I've never personally installed, um, you know, computers or things like that. Um, troubleshooting is a whole nother thing. I can troubleshoot. Um, forever and ever and ever, and uh, you start to see sort of the same problems that come up um, in terms of troubleshooting, and, and you become familiar with those. Um, and I'm confident that I could, I could get the information that I need. Um, one thing with privacy controls, I do know a little bit about Clean Slate, which I think you might be referring to when you're regarding privacy controls. So um, again, that's from working with IT professionals and just asking the right questions at the right time and, and you know, looking over their shoulder. What are you doing now? So um, that's where my experience comes from with that. I hope that helped. Thank you. Yeah. Can, can I ask a follow-up? Yeah. Um, just in terms of, uh, of some of the more handheld stuff, um, are you comfortable working with you know, various phone systems, iPads, et cetera? I am, yeah. I have always um, been a, a PC user. However, um, in my workplaces, iPads have been kind of ubiquitous. So um, I know my way around an iPad. Um, we did have, we do have an iPad mini at Leverett um, that caused all sorts of trouble because of course, Apple, and you know, I understand and I admire for them, they're, they're um, security features in terms of when you hand over an iPad to a new individual or person are so extreme. And I get, I understand why they are. Um, but it took me a few months to actually get work through that and figure it out. And then we had, we then had an 
functional IDAP again. But there was a while there where, yeah, we had to troubleshoot for a while, but we got there. Um, and I regularly help patrons, you know, with Android devices. Um, you know, we have a lot of Kindles that come in. Um, so, you know, there's there's a multitude of devices and um, I'm, you know, pretty, pretty happy working with a patron one on one to, to figure out what what they're what they're needing. OK, OK, well, I now have a question about working with older adults. Um, so tell us about your experience working with older adults. Uh, what okay. have you found engages them? <laughs> what services and activities would you like to offer them through the library? Sure. So I work with almost exclusively older adults. Um, I have two volunteers out of about 20 who are um, under the age of 60. Um, most of them are 65 to uh, 80s. Um, and most of my patrons are in that age range too. Um, Leverett, like many towns in Western Mass, um, is an aging community. Um, you know, some of our communities are not growing. Um, so what I have found at Leverett, and again, it comes back to your community and not every community is the same, nor is every older person the same. Um, older adults in Leverett uh, fitness classes designed for seniors are immensely popular um, yeah. and I cannot satisfy their need, their, their desire for fitness classes. I just can't. I would be running them all day, every day. <laughs> um, so those are always extremely popular. We have an instructor that we work with that many other libraries locally work with who is great and has a great rapport. Um, so and luckily grants for physical activity programs are pretty easy to come by um so you know i would definitely be looking at grant funding for that um we completed a strategic planning process uh last summer and uh, you know keeping in mind that our community is mostly age that also reflected in um, the respondents to our surveys. So most of our survey respondents were over um, 65 years of age. And what they were really looking for was opportunities for just social drop-ins. Mm -hmm. No particular program, just an opportunity. That said, in Leverett, we don't have a senior center, but, um, but they just wanted a chance to come in, drop in, have a chat, Maybe, um, and I'm thinking along, along the lines of, um, I think uh, Irving is exploring Acorn Television right now, RV Digital, and we have that in, um, in Leverett. And what's nice about that is it comes with um, um, screening rights. So I'm not sure if you have um, a sound system in the new, or an AV system in the new library or not, but um, maybe just screening, you know, an episode of uh, a program and having tea out uh, for people to come and, and join in on that. Um, so just like a social hour, I found is something that people were really wanting. Um, I met with Council of Aging um, a while ago and asked them what do they need from the library. And um, what came out of that was that the timing of programs is really important. Um, so that's always something that I look at when I'm considering programs for older adults. Um, I've been told many older adults don't want to come out after dark or, um, you know, they prefer weekends or, or what it may be. Um, armchair travel programs, I find, are very popular with um, older adults. Um, those are pretty fun and easy to put together, and you often have um, willing volunteers in the community that can put together a nice program for that. One-on-one um, -on -one tech help, I feel, is important, too, to offer. Um, and uh, jigsaw puzzles are very popular at my library uh, with older adults, so I could see that that would be a fun kind of um, club or, or gathering to, to offer. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I just, I just want to say that Volunteering too is important because as I said, most of my volunteers are um, aged adults and they are clamoring to come back when we reopen. Um, I don't know what that's gonna look like, um, but 
they really want to be back in this space. So. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Yeah, you're welcome, Jim. I have another technology question, and it kind of continues with the previous question. But can you share us? Uh, can you share with us some experiences you've had with helping the less tech savvy people with their technology? Yeah. Um, so I have one volunteer who um, had kind of an IT background before she retired, and. Um, is an avid um, reader of, you know, overdrive books and digital collections. So um, I said, well, why don't you, when you're, for the night that you're due to be here, why don't we offer uh, tech help, drop-in help, you know, no appointment necessary, just come in. Um, and that's worked out really well. I mean, have we gotten a lot? Probably not, she's never inundated, but I think it's an important service to offer. Um, and, uh, I guess my approach to tech help is kind of more philosophical than like specific things. Um, it's like a reference interview to me. It's the closest that um, a lot of librarians get to a reference interview these days because people aren't to the extent that they used to. They're not coming in and looking for information as such, right? Um, but a reference interview gets pretty close because I feel like it's important to ask somebody before you start helping them, okay, what have you tried? Um, what do you know about this? And also, what do you want to be able to do? Because sometimes what somebody is trying to do or wanting to do may be very different from what is possible or, um, or uh, they might have, a, you know, a fundamental um, misunderstanding about what that device can do. So I, I kind of conduct it like a reference interview. Um, and I like to, um, point out that technology is wide and vast. And, um, you know, my my daughter is really great at social media, but she has no idea how to use a fax machine. So there's no need for any of us to feel dumb or, or you know, if you're getting frustrated, just realize that everybody gets frustrated. I've seen IT people get frustrated with things that they've used before. So I guess I try to like level the playing field a bit. Um, and uh, keep it simple, don't overwhelm. Um, I try, and this, this actually applies when I'm working with somebody of any age. I found it works with children and it works with older adults and everybody in between. Um, I ask if I can sit with them and so that I'm at the same level and we're looking at the same thing together. Um, I use a lot of humor and um, just acknowledge that it's hard, you know, the, the, whatever you're trying to learn, whether it be, um, you know, how to disable your Facebook account or um, how to upload things to the cloud, like it's not going to be easy necessarily and hardly anybody finds it easy to begin with. Um, so um, for me, I feel like it's a great time to make a human connections, strangely enough, and to go on that journey. Like I've discovered things when I'm helping people with tech requests. Um, and in our library, we try to, we do try to offer workshops. Um, they're not well attended, I have to say. Um, but what I do find is helpful is to put out something like on the tables saying, so that we can identify the pain points. You know, what would you like to find out more about so that we know where we can start from and then where we can begin to offer help from. That helps. Okay. I think I'm up. Yep. Okay. And I managed to unmute too. Um, so this is an availability question. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, you, as you, as you probably know, we're open Sundays, uh, and that's really one of our busiest days. Uh, mm -hmm. So when we go back to uh, working out of our uh, brick and mortar care drive, uh, how do you feel about uh, working on Sundays? Is that I think that might be an issue for you? I work on Sundays now, um, so I work twelve to five on Sundays. Um, working weekends and nights is inherent in this profession. Um, 
I have no problem working with this. <laughs> Thank you. Is that too short of an answer? Or? <laughs> yeah, that's fine. This is supposed to be an easy question. We'll put yeah. one of them in there. Just one name again, please. Collaboration. Here in Irving, the director collaborates with the school librarian, the monthly town newsletter, and the senior center, etc. Can you speak to your experience and or vision collaborating with other town groups? What did you learn from your experiences? Sure. So I'll start with answering the last question there. Um, what did you learn? I guess what I've learned from collaborations um, is they're kind of like a marriage. Every party has to work at it and nurture it and be upfront about expectations, um, marriage or a relationship. Say. Um, and uh, so not everybody is going to be able to have the same um, input or be able to do the same amount, which I think is fine in a collaboration, but you have to be upfront about that at the beginning and you have to be upfront with each other about how everybody is going to benefit and overall how it is going to help your mission and um, how, um, you know, how it's gonna help the community. So um, one that I'm particularly proud of, which I've already referred to is the libraries in the woods. Um, so this was something that I started last year. Um, I reached out to other Franklin County, County libraries um, and in that, um, reiteration we had about 10 of us participate um it's a it's a town-wide community read done over several towns so we we chose the book um and then we collaborated to build programming um that experience makes me so incredibly proud to be a librarian um to work in franklin county with librarians that are astonishing um and library staff that are astonishing um, and the word got out that it was kind of a cool thing. Um, and uh, this year we were up to 20 libraries that wanted to participate in some way. Now, not every library participates in a big way. Not everybody can do as much as other libraries and that's totally fine. But we were upfront about that to begin with. Um, so I'm, I'm happy and proud of that one and I love it and it's exciting and I think it's done great things for our communities. Um, the Friends of Levert Pond um, approached me about starting a boat loan program on Levert Pond. So that would have been probably happening about now. Um, it is not, So, but that's been a really fun collaboration um, to work with them. Um, I mentioned it, the Lever Historical Commission. I work with them on um, uh, produce, uh, getting a grant. And so the idea of that is to transcribe some interviews from a project that they had done on one room schoolhouses. Um, so that's been a great collaboration. Um, I have a great relationship with Lever Elementary School um, and the school librarian, Ms. Rivers. Um, she's one of my favorite people. Uh, we applied for a grant together in the past. We always have our heads together coming up with plans. Um, she has me over there in the spring for her book fair so I can talk up summer reading. Um, last year, the school principal invited me to serve on the LES school council, so I did that. Um, the um, Community Network for Children, um, Irving School Union 28, is invaluable to Leverett. We don't have um, children's librarians, so they kind of act as our story time and, our, and a lot of our children's programming. Um, they are so important to our library. Um, I work really close with, closely with Gillian. She invited me to be on their advisory council, so I'm serving on that as well. Um, we collaborate on some programs, so a stuffy sleepover was, again, meant to happen <laughs> in uh, April, I think. That did not happen. Um, and um, I collaborated with the Leverett Co-op, Community Co-op, and I did story time there for about a year. Um, so that was great to get the library out of the library and into a different community venue. Um, strategic For our strategic planning process, I really thought about um, 
the town departments and and we and um, getting people onto that that um, could offer different perspectives. So I had a member of our planning board serve on that, and that was a great experience. Um, and the, your friends group is just such an amazing collaborator, right? Like that's one of the best collaborations that exists. So um, very important to nurture those relationships. I hope that helps. <laughs> And so um, that's the questions that we had for you. Um, and so the last question is on is really just, do you have any questions for us that we might be able to answer for you? Sure. Am I doing okay on time? Uh, yeah. Okay. A couple minutes. Okay. Um, the um, it, one other thing I just wanted to offer about the um, COVID closure time and services, I think I didn't quite address um, what would staff be doing. Um, again, luckily librarians, we share, that's what we do. So there are so many ideas out there for how to keep your staff engaged. And so I've been uh, maintaining a, a document that um, of, of ideas that um, my staff member can look to and think about, is this something that she wants to do? Is this something that she would be good at? So there's a long list of ideas um, in, in ways to keep staff engaged and, and working towards our mission. Um, so I just okay. So um, I was curious as to um, it looks like the library is due for a strategic planning process. Um, I don't know if anybody from the committee can speak to whether there are plans to delay that by a year or to just dive right in over the summer. I'm sorry, you said the, the library is due for what? I, I didn't hear uh, what you said. Strategic planning process. So the current strategic or long range plan is due to expire, I believe. Rupert, you're muted still. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, it was really not important. I just said, it seems like we just did that. Yeah, yeah I was thinking I'm the sure same thing. I'm sure it does. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe no plans. That's all right. I was just wondering if there had been talk of that. So. Well, did no. you did a did you guys do a strategic plan or were you just was part of it getting ready with the new library and all of that? Um, it, it was a, honestly it was a little bit of both and and again with with everything being so up in the air nothing has been honestly talked about lately with it so uh, okay. I think we're so, just in a holding pattern at the moment sure right and that's something that that really we would expect the um, library director to take the lead on uh, and okay. work with us on yeah all right thank you and um the website, I was just curious because I have a lot of experience with content management websites um, and I work on our own website now at Leverett. The Leverett, I mean, the um, Irving site, is that part of the town of Irving site and therefore like you don't pay a separate domain? Right. Thing? Okay. All right. right. And there's no plans to change that? Nope. Not, okay. not currently. Nope. Okay. Great. Um, I think my other questions were really about um, do, does the does the trustees or do the trustees or um, the, uh, at board meeting do you talk about like the kind of community development plans that are happening happening more Irving wide? Is that something that you um, you know feel like more conversation needs to happen about or how does that how does that figure into your priorities are you talking about things like the other departments in the town are doing like the rec department and that sort of thing yeah that kind of thing yeah um we are certainly we're aware of everything sometimes we collaborate together on things um for mm -hmm. sure um other times we just help to cross promote um okay. so we'll promote rec things rec will promote you know library things however or other departments whatever seems to work best. So we definitely, mm -hmm. being a small town, do collaborate on a lot of things um, okay. and then have our own independent activities as well. Yeah, okay. Could I comment also, 
um, as being on the finance committee and a variety of other things over the years, um, we find that it's always best when we can make every attempt to work together. We frequently have differences of opinion and sometimes personalities get in the way and that happens wherever mm -hmm. you go. Sort of like programs, sometimes they fail, sometimes they succeed. <laughs> but trying to have collaborative efforts and not feel like uh, the trustees are omnipotent over the library. They, they, we work within budgets and, and work with other committees too. And uh, with school committees, over the years we've seen uh, school committees or finance committees or select boards who seem to think they're going to rule things. <laughs> and it doesn't work well, uh, in my experience, working together uh, for a reasonable outcome that everybody's pretty well satisfied with, uh, people don't get everything they want, uh, always seems to work with us. And, and I expect that will continue because there are people in place, trustees, finance, select board, uh, and school committee who, who all feel that way. Uh, and uh, it's taken a long time to kind of achieve that, but I feel we're in a very good place. Um, mm -hmm. A little bit fit to, to your question of do we interact with other boards and you know, other, other committees? Mm -hmm. We do. Okay, great. Thanks, Dan. I, I, could, just, I could just add um, in the process of, I'm not muted, I'm not good. No, um, no you're good. <laughs> Uh, in, in the process of, of building the new building, we worked with a lot of different uh, uh, yeah. parts of the town because there are uh, plans to uh, build some senior housing behind the mm -hmm. senior center, uh, community center, and the library. Uh, and so we really tried to coordinate with other groups around that. Uh, and there's been a lot of natural fit also with um, uh, the, the senior community center, the, the, the town mm -hmm. um, rec. Uh, committee who uh, recently developed a park, uh, and we've had a lot of work together with him. Okay, great. Thank you. Those are all my questions. Great. Oh, did we pass? We passed. <laughs> Fine colors. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we um, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much. Uh, I know this is going to be a little awkward doing it from you know your living room or wherever you are. So I appreciate that. Um, we had minimal technical difficulties, which was lovely. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so yeah, so our plan is to make our decision as soon as possible, so that there's as um, um, as much time uh, overlapping with the current director as possible. Um, uh, new director and old director. Um, so um, yeah, so I, I appreciate your your being here, and we'll let you know. Okay, thanks for the opportunity to meet with you today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Oops. <laughs> So that awkward moment where you're waiting for everybody to kind of hit the button. Um, we do not have um, another interview again, like I had mentioned before, because of the the, the candidate um, dropped out. So we are technically done for tonight. Um, and so I just wanted to give a quick, uh, tomorrow we will uh, have our three interviews and then we will, um, after the last one kind of, um, go over our scores and decide um, who is going to who who's going to move on to the next round of interviews um, with just the trustees or next level with just the trustees. Does that make sense for everybody? Yes. Okay. Yes, and I assume um, that uh, maybe that would be a good time to try to um, approve minutes as well. Oh. oh yes yes and jane i did see that you sent them out thank you um yes rupert thank you for for reminding me of that and if i forget again tomorrow please but, remind me of that <laughs> i only brought it up because i hadn't read them yet and i was hoping we'd have more time <laughs> yes. oh I, yeah i figured i guess i was thinking tomorrow as well i was yeah. hoping i just wanted to get them out to you all so yep that was that was my hope as well i i just forgot to mention it can i ask so, you a what, question what, what after you, Dan. Go ahead. What, what is the start time tomorrow? Um, I believe it's 10. 10. And then, of course, the person won't, I mean, theoretically, we wouldn't actually start the interview until 10, 15. 
Okay. Give them a minute to just get ourselves situated. And then there is a break um, after the second uh, candidate to get a drink, do whatever you need to do, and then come back. Okay. Great. All right. Uh, my, my question was, um, other days in my side panel there, I could see who was uh, uh, had joined the meeting that wasn't a participant, and I can't see that now. Do you know what happened? I don't. I have that, um, but well, I... I have attendees, but it doesn't show anyone other than Brian being in. Maybe he's the only one that's in that's not on the committee. That's it. Um, th so there should be attendees and there should be staff. That's what it should be. I don't have staff showing up. It's, it should be right next to the, you can toggle between the two, attendees and staff. Well, we're the staff, right? Yes. We're yep. the staff. How do you yeah. toggle to the attendees? Attendees, yeah, so whatever the one you're in should be blue, and then the other one right next to the to the left or to the right of it should be white. And you, so you would just click on that. Um, Bizarre. Let me see. I don't know how to show you it. So under attendees, if you click on attendees and, and open the you know drop down box. Yeah. Immediately under attendees, there should be um, a second uh, rectangle box that says attendees, and there are three of them. And then right uh, next to that should say staff, and there should be eight. Hi, and attendees. Thank you for joining us. I was trying to figure oh, that there. out. Okay. <laughs> and that way, yeah, so you can just toggle between the two and see who's on and who's not. Worked for me yesterday. Yeah. I couldn't, I don't know what I was missing. Thank you. Could, could could I ask where it says there are 11 attendees, but one handout? Does that mean somebody's waiting to be to be unmuted to ask a question? The handout is the thing that I no. read at the beginning. Yeah, that's the that's a actual handout, like a piece of paper handout. Oh, you can, okay. You can okay. click on that. You not, can click on a, that yourself. Yeah. It's it, it's really it's, it's, a, it's an attachment. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And it's it, exactly it's what Rupert. Um, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So it's a digital um, handout. Okay. So so you can see if if some one of the other attendees wants to ask a question, they raise a hand somehow. Is that it? Um, they are in listen only mode. Um, there is a like a hand up signal. Um, like right now, Barbara has her hand up um, signal. Um, she has a question, it looks like. So I can unmute Barbara and she can then talk. Barbara, do you want to say hi? Uh, no, I just I just was telling you I'm in when, when Rupert asked. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, it comes up as a little hand. So yeah, I didn't have that yeah. tab open. Thank, thank you, Barbara. Yeah. Yeah, well, you're, you're welcome. I think you're doing very well on these interviews. It seems to be going very smoothly. So I, I commend you for doing it in this way. Oh, Thank good. You. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, is it my turn now? Yes. Yes, it is. Madam Chair, I would like to make a motion to adjourn. Excellent. I, like I would like the second. Okay, I think Dan got in right before you. We have a second and a third. <laughs> All right, I, I'm. Uh, unless Am I supposed to be keeping training? track of this now? <laughs> uh, who, who seconded it? Dan. Dan. Okay, he got in first, huh? Yep. By a whisker. <laughs> All in favor of adjourning for the night? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you all. Thank you Thank very you. much. Bye. See you tomorrow, bright and early, 10 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not so early. <laughs> okay. It's early. it's early for these times. I know. <laughs> okay, for the weekend, non-weekend, whatever. <laughs> yeah.
Okay, we'll see you all. Well, hi and bye, Mackenzie. I guess we should go, but nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> see, see you later. Bye. <laughs> okay, and I don't know. Brian, are you still on?